In this video, what I want to do is cover my top tips for helping you with rational expressions. Now, this can these tips are going to help you either graph, simplify, as well as solve rational equations. So I got a tip a little bit for everything, and I'm hoping that you can utilize these on your next homework assignment, um, quest, or test, or exam. I was trying to combine the quiz and the test with a quest, but not what I was not what I meant to say, but kind of funny how it came out. So, anyways, let's kind of go through the first tip. And the first tip is going to come into like how do you graph a 2x plus five divided by an X plus one, right? And the first tip is to use, the, to rewrite this as a reciprocal. So a lot of students would maybe have difficult with this and you might like recognize some portion, some characteristics of this graph, but I think the easiest way to graph a reciprocal or graph a rational function is using the reciprocal function, right? Because if you have a reciprocal function in this form, like one over um, X minus, uh, let's see, um, H and then plus K, like we can shift this left to right. We can shift it up or down. Like you should know what this graph looks like, which is which we call the parent graph, right? So this, this format is very, very easy. When you have something that you cannot, when you have something in this rational form, polynomial divided by another polynomial, a lot of times what we do is we find all the characteristics and then we use a table and we're plotting points and like it can take a long time. So this might be a little bit difficult for a lot of students to graph, but actually the problem is really not that difficult if you can rewrite it from this form into that form. So how do we do that? Well, you do that by using long division, right? And I know a lot of students are like, oh no, long division, I don't want to do long division. But guys, if you can just like use the, like, that's why long division is so important. If you can just know the basics of this to rewrite this form, then um, it's just going to, in my opinion, it's going to make your life so much easier. So in this case, x divides into x plus one, right? Two times. Two times x is a two x, and then you multiply the two times one, which is going to be a positive two. Then go ahead and subtract your rows. Two x goes to zero. Five minus two is going to be a three. X is not divided into three. So what is that? That is our remainder. And if you remember, what do we do with our remainder? We put our remainder over our divisor. So my answer, or our quotient here, is y is equal to a two plus a three over a x plus one. Well, what do you know? hey, wait a minute, if I just rewrite this, three over an X plus one plus two, that is now in the form that I was looking for, right? So this actually is pretty easy to go and graph. Now, I didn't add a three up top here or like a number up top there. And if you remember, like all that is is like a scalar, right? That's just stretching or compressing the graph based on what its value is. So that's why I'm not really considering it. The only thing I'm really worried about I'm worried about you understanding at least with the reciprocal is just to kind of get the general sketch of the graph is what is shifting left or right? What is shifting up or down? H in this case is going to be shifting our graph left or right. K in this graph is going to be shifting my graph um, up or down. So in this example, if I wanted to go ahead and graph this, remember there are asymptotes here. Like don't forget about the reciprocal function. There are asymptotes, right? There's a vertical asymptote at X equals zero and a horizontal asymptote at Y equals zero. So if I want to go ahead and graph this function, um, shifting, if I have X plus one, that's actually shifting my graph one unit to the left. So my vertical asymptote is now shifting one unit to the left. And now my horizontal asymptote is being shifted up two units. Okay. So now I'm just going to be able to resketch this exact same graph to look like that. And ladies and gentlemen, without having to find any characteristics. Now, obviously you need to know how to find characteristics, which I'll get to. But without being able to find any characteristics, by just knowing a little bit of uh, long division, I was able to rewrite my rational expression in reciprocal form. Now, this doesn't work for all of them, right? Not every um, everyone's going to work like that. But when you do have the denominator or the um, degrees are going to be the same in this format, then you can go ahead and give it a shot. And hopefully this will be something that will allow you to graph things um, using a different technique that maybe you were thinking or expecting or your teacher wanted um, was, you know, teacher was, you know, having you go ahead and or maybe originally taught. All right. The next one kind of is related to that with the graphing, and that is going to be the X and Y intercepts. Okay. Now I am a big proponent of explaining why things work. Right. Um, and the main thing that like, I think all students, I don't care where you're learning or what you're learning. Like if I, you want to find the X intercept set Y equal to zero and then solve for X. If you want to find the Y intercept, set X equal to zero and solve for Y. It doesn't matter what the function is. Follow those tips. However, what the nice thing is about, um, the nice thing about rational expressions is the same kind of like, the same um, kind of uh, characteristics keep on happening up. 
And so what we can do is actually we can simplify this a little bit more. So if I want to find the x-intercept, a faster, easier way to do that is just going to be set the numerator equal to zero. So set the numerator equal to zero. Okay, that is just a quicker, faster, easier way to do it. Same thing for the y-intercept. If you want to go ahead and find the y-intercept of a rational expression, yes, set a equals equal zero, solve for y, right? Or just take the constant over the other constant. And there you go. You're done. Like it can be that quick. It's so fast. All right. So I'm always a big proponent of understanding and going through the long way. But once I kind of show students the long way a couple times, I'm like, all right, guys, we did the long way. Like, Let's do this quickly, right? Because typically, usually finding the x and the y intercepts is just a portion of a problem that we're trying to solve. So let's go and take a look at, you know, at least an example here. If I had like y is equal to a 4x plus 1 divided by a x squared minus 5, okay? So if I want to find the x intercept, right? All I'm simply going to do, don't worry about setting y equals 0 and solve for x. No, just set the numerator equals 0. 4x plus 1 equals 0. And then solve, right? So y is equal to constant over constant. So solve. So subtract one, divide by four, x equals a negative one fourth. Done. Okay. What about constant? What about my y-intercept? Y-intercept is going to be one over a negative five, right? Constant over constant. So y is equal to a one over a negative five and done. That's that quick, that fast, right? So these are just some tips, right? Now, again, obviously there's a good explanation on why that works and how it works. I'll have videos for that. This is about the tips. Go ahead and use that. Now, the one problem though that this does not work for is the is um, for a reciprocal function. So if you had y is equal to a three over a x plus one plus two, you can't follow these tips. This only works for rational functions. This is a rational function in a certain form, which is called the reciprocal, which is the, in the reciprocal form. So you can't do it in this case. In this case, you're actually going to have to set equal well, actually, I'll give you two tips. You're going to have to follow x equals zero, set y equals zero, and solve for x, or, and then also set x equals zero, and then solve for y. Now, it's going to deal with some dip, um, fractions. So what you could do, though, is you could go ahead and rewrite it. So the tip you could do here is actually you could rewrite it as a rational expression. So multiply by x plus one times an x plus one, right? Get common denominators, three over an x plus one, three equal to, and then this is going to be plus a two X plus two divided by an X plus one, right? And then you'd have Y is equal to, what is that? A two X plus five all over an X plus one, right? So just go ahead and combine them and you should have your original answer, which I did. Just go ahead and combine them. And then you can go and follow these tips if you want to. Either way, you're going to have to do some work, right? So just a little side tip I actually wasn't even planning on talking about, but glad I did. Um, Yeah. So now let's go and take a look at another one, which is going to be Tip number three is some just kind of going to be relating with common denominators. Okay. Now when I'm dealing with common denominators, um, there's really kind of two ways that I want you to kind of think about common denominators. All right. If I had like one plus two plus one plus three, the fastest, easiest way to find the common denominator, right? The least common denominator, is just going to be multiplying them two times three, right? Which equals six. Done. Okay. Got it. Just multiply your denominators. Fastest, easiest way to find a common denominator. However, it's not the always the only way. Okay. So in this case, my LCD, oops, not, not this one. Sorry. Um, one over six here, my LCD does not equal, right? A, um, in this case, my LCD does not equal 12. So don't do that. Okay. So the reason why it doesn't work here is because I can two evenly divides into six. Now, sometimes that is um, sometimes that is, uh, like obvious and sometimes it's not. So you, you know, obviously we're dealing with numbers. It's kind of a little bit easier than we're dealing with polynomials, but sometimes you might want to factor something down. Six can be factored down into a two times three. And you recognize, oh, two is already in this answer, right? So if the LCD in this case is also going to be a six. So these are going to be your two things I want you to look out for. All right. Now let's go and deal with some problems that are actually dealing with polynomials because, Students usually understand this stuff with numbers, but then once we get into polynomials, they're like, um, or I just kind of totally forgot everything. So let's kind of explain a problem like this. And again, I'm just going to work on finding the LCD. That's the main thing I just want you to like understand with this. 
All right, does, let's look at the denominator. So I'm trying to subtract these. I got to have common denominator, right? So and actually, you know, I think I'll have enough room, maybe. Yeah, I guess I may could solve it up. So in this example, the LCD, right? What is the LCD? Well, does X minus five and X minus two have anything in common? No, right? They're polynomials. They don't have anything in common. So guess what? The LCD is going to equal to an X plus five times an X minus two, right? It's the product of them two. So that's what you're going to multiply by both terms to go ahead and satisfy. And yeah, you know, let's just go ahead and figure out this problem. So therefore, you're going to multiply here the top by an X plus five times an X minus two. And then over here, a X plus five times an X minus two. And the reason why multiplying by the LCD is so important is now those are going to divide out. Those are going to divide out. And now we're going to be left with a, a three X squared minus two times a X minus two minus a X squared times a X plus five. Okay. So my denominators now got divided out. So you can see how uh, identifying those. Now it's going to take too long. So I don't want to go through all those. Let's just go through the examples here. Cause yeah, that will take too long. Um, the next one is what about if you have something like this? What about if you have a complex number? Yeah, just do it with the tips. A three X divided by X plus three plus a two X over a X plus four divided by a X plus one divided by a X squared plus seven X plus 12. <sighs> okay. Now you got to, I want you to look at the denominators here, right? So we have an X plus three and X plus four. Those do not have anything in common, right? And then you might be looking at this one. You'll be like, ah, crap, I have three different denominators, right? They have nothing in common, but wait here. Think about this. Again, here goes this tip. Like if you only have two denominators, they have nothing in common, multiply them, find the LCD, right? I'm actually just going to delete this as my work. Um, cause I don't want to, I don't want to like overly complicate this, this paper or that problem. There we go. Let's just change that back up. Okay. Um, so rather than trying to multiply all three of these, is there anything that can be factored? X plus three? No. X plus four? No. X squared plus seven X plus 12? Hmm. What two numbers multiply to give you seven? Add to give you, I'm sorry. What two numbers multiply to give you 12? Add to give you seven. Oh, X plus four times an X plus three. Guess what? Look at, ah, X plus four is in that answer. X plus three is in that answer. So my LCD in this case is just going to be X plus four times an X plus three, right? Aha, that's it. So those are kind of two types I want you to look for or two tips I want you to look for when you're trying to um, find your LCD, when you need to go ahead and combine or simplify. Now, in the next example, I actually kind of cover why we're looking for that LCD. And the whole idea of understanding or finding your LCD is basically this, to eliminate fractions. This is what I want you to do eliminate your fractions. That's why we, that's why we find that common denominator. That's why we multiply, um, by the common denominator is to eliminate fractions. So let's just kind of go through an example here where you can see like how this helps us, um, how this helps us solve. So here's an example. Let's say I have a X plus one divided by four. And we can kind of start with a elementary example. Like you might get in like algebra one divided by a one over 12. Now I think I just made up this problem. So the <laughs> numbers might not make sense. But what is my LCD? What is the smallest number that four, three, and 12 all evenly divide into? Hopefully you recognize this can be factored to a four times three, right? So my LCD is equal to a 12. Now what happens when I multiply everything times 12, right? So 12 times this, 12 times that, 12 times this. Well, what happens here is I multiply 12 times an X plus one divided by four. Oops, let's write it like this. Minus a X minus two divided by three times 12. Let's put the 12 on the outside. Let's put that right there. So 12 times an X minus two divided by three and equals to a one twelfth. And let's do times 12. So what's happened, what's important about this is notice how four divides into 12. How many times? Three times, right? How many times is three divided into 12? Four times. How many times is 12 divided by 12? One time. Right? So what I want you to see is what happens when I multiply by my common denominator, right? All my denominators got eliminated. I eliminated my fractions. Now I can just apply distributive property here and I can go ahead and solve. So this is a three X plus three minus a four X plus eight equals one. Combine my like terms here. Uh, this is going to be what a negative X plus 11 equals one. Subtract 11 
negative x equals a negative 10 divided by negative 1 divided by negative 1. x is going to equal a positive 10. Okay, so you can see how this um, you can see how that like works with some numbers. Like maybe let's do um, maybe a little bit more complicated example. Like um, what about when we have like a rational expression? So what about if I had one over? I'm sorry, complex expression. So what if I had one over five x? Actually, you know, let's do one with variables. Um, let's say I had a one over a x plus four minus a two over a x plus three equals a six over a x squared plus seven x plus 12. Okay. Now again, guys, common denominator. Can this be factored down? Oh yeah. This can be factored down to an x plus four times an x plus three, right? So now that is your common denominator. Multiply everything by your common denominator. Now this one I'm not going to solve, but I want you to see what happens. When I multiply everything by this common denominator, right? You got to see what happens here. X, come on, X plus four times X plus three, right? Times a one over an X plus four minus, I don't know why I'm putting that over parentheses. It's already there. So that's going to be times a one over an X plus four minus a, let's do a um, X plus four times an X plus three. Um, times a two over an X plus three. And that's equal to, again, I think I made this problem up six times a X plus one times X plus three, which holy crap, I'm running out of room. So that's going to be times a X plus four. Times an X plus three. Okay. So anyways, hopefully recognize X plus four divides into the X plus four. X plus three divides into this X plus three. Right. And then here, nothing actually multiplies that out. So therefore now I'm just going to be left with a X plus three times one, which is X plus three. This one's actually going to be a minus X plus four times two. So that's going to be a minus a two times X plus four. And then this is going to equal a six times an X plus four times a X plus three. So in the spirit of just understanding, I want you to understand that now I have a linear equation that hopefully you can go ahead and go ahead and solve. But I do want to cover like one more example with you. At least so you guys can see um, how these eliminate your fractions. And that other example is going to be like if I had one over a 5x plus two divided by one over a 10x, let's say plus seven, right? Now, again, a lot of times when students see a problem like this, it's like complex fractions. They're like, ah, just, what do I do here? I want you to think of that same thing. Eliminate the fractions, eliminate the fractions. What is my common denominator? How many denominators do I have, right? Well, if you're just looking like, Obviously, you have a big fraction, but within these little, little fractions, you have 5x, 10x, 1 and 5, 1 and 1. So in this case, you can see that my LCD is going to equal a 10x, right? Because 5x divides into 10x two times, right? So that actually divides into that. So my LCD is in 10x. So let's multiply everything times my um, LCD of 10x. So when I do this, I get a 10x times 1 over 5x plus a 10x. Now you can write this two over one, or you can just write it as a two. It doesn't really matter. Um, I have a 10x times a one over a 10x and then plus a seven over one again, times a 10x. Again, you can put these in parentheses here. All right. So what happens here? 10x times one over five X. Again, that's in the numerator, right? So five X goes in 10x two times, two times one is a two 10 X times two is going to be a 20 X divided by here. The 10 X's are going to divide out. That's going to leave me with a one. And then over here, I'm going to have a 70 X. So the main important thing is we still have a fraction, right? But what did I did? I went from four fractions down to just, or sorry, five fractions down to just one fraction. It simplified the process. So find the common denominator and multiply them when you have complex fractions or when you have rational equations that is going to eliminate the fractions. Hopefully these tips were helpful for you guys. If so, I look forward to seeing you in the next video.